And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some day and night. Going to be our next donation deck here on Meme Tier Monday. This is a singular region deck, all Targon. The person that donated for it just wanted to play one region, just wants to play Targon, and just wants to invoke. We're going to be doing lots of invoking in here. We're going to have both Priestess, Lunari, and Solari. We're going to have Mountain Scryer, which is going to be our payoff for being... Um, all Targon. We're going to be hitting that Allegiance every time. And we got Star Shaping being able to invoke as well, plus a couple of Eclipse Dragons. So with us invoking so much and getting a whole bunch of invoke things in play, we're going to have we're going to try out Skies Descend. If we just have two Celestial allies in play, just two of them, then this costs 11 mana. And so like 11 mana for a one-sided board wipe, you know, like where we don't, you know, it's Ruination where it doesn't kill our stuff, just does 15 damage to all their stuff. Could be worth it. So we're going to just try out a one of Skies Descend at the top end. Because our deck also plays uh, a pretty good defensive game. That's what Leona does. Um, you know, it's a very good blocker. You sit back, you stun things. Um, you have this, you have your, your Robin, your other Solari cards. They do a good job of just kind of sitting back and blocking. And so we're going to sit back and block. And uh, then we're going to invoke, have our really powerful invoke stuff take over the game. And also, boom, late game skies descend. So it should be pretty cool. So we're just playing it over in normal because it's it's meme tier Monday today. We just got all Targon, all Invoke here. It's going to be our second deck. Let's uh, give this one a try. Let's see how it does. All right, starting off against uh, Twisted Fate Maokai. So they're going to be trying to mill us out, maybe? Probably that. They're probably going to try to level up Maokai. And then, after they level up Maokai, make us draw our four cards. Hey, Choo Choo! Close in on half a year! Thank you, Choo Choo. Okay, our hand... Um, I'm gonna mulligan this. Alright, I'm just gonna mulligan that's, that Lunari Priestess. I, I could see mulliganing Robin also. Um, I want to keep the Solari Priestess. I like this, having this on turn three. And I really like the Sunburst because the Sunburst is going to give me a removal spell for Maokai. So as we see, this is going to be a longer game. Like they're, they're playing defense. We're playing defense. We're going to get some Invoke. Let's get Meteor Shower. It's either Meteor Shower or Warrior. I'll just take the Meteor Shower. Life but legends last. Mm. Ooh. Like a fish in water. <laughs> That card's good. Kind of stuck here doing nothing this turn. Could have, you know, just Meteor Shower just kill a Spray Fin. I'm not sure if I love that. Cool. <laughs> love it. Everybody getting the high puts in for Choo Choo. That's awesome. Thanks, everybody. I forgot to to type that in. To Why are you here? Cool, I like that trade. Now like the gem will gem does a really good job turning on nightfall. If we so choose. How many cards do I have in hand? That looks like 10. That yeah, looks like 10. So I guess we kind of need to play something that doesn't replace itself. <laughs> it's hard to do, though. Let's 
So all these things replace themselves. Calm mind and open heart greet the night. Let your story shine. I guess I'm just casting that to get something out of my hand. Yeah, we have so many good options. Our strength is forever at its zenith. Blessed daylight surrounds you. Or they're just gonna play Ruination. I could see that happening. Chosen of the moon. We open our hearts to her gentle light. But I mean if that happens, I have I have all the stuff. Like it's it's okay. We'll be fine. Piercing rays! Night descends. I will be heard. Fortunate fellow. No, no, no. There's just two defensive value decks going back and forth. And Maokai is going to be pretty rough, though. You know, like they they could just let 25 things die, basically, and play a leveled up Maokai, and then I'm out of guards. Big Abyssal Eye. It's a big Abyssal Eye. Alright, definitely like the Mountain Scryer. Help make some things cost less. Get that out of here this turn. Deal me in. Blue as the serpentine. I gotta kill all these things. Too many things for me to kill. Gonna let it happen. I want to play this Mountain Scryer. So making these invokes cost less. I know these paths well. So we have nine mana next turn. Okay. Alright, I guess they didn't have the stomach for the fight. We will take it. Alright, playing some ramp. This is definitely a good Sunburst matchup. Sunburst against Trindamir is pretty awesome. I like having all this Daybreak stuff. Like, we'll just keep all the Daybreak together. It's a very good Daybreak curve. Uh, I'm not sure the exact rate for channel points. Does anybody know in the channel? I know that you earn more if you're a subscriber. Unyielding light. Away doubt. I think I may be able to check, kind of. Oh, no. Don't do that. These old eyes still see far and clear. Okay, yeah, we'll just go Slayer Priestess. Sunlight Definitely want these Obliterates against these Trundles and Trindomirs. Perfect. So that's the best option. Good. Keep that Sunburst. With its light, the Solari will unite Sunlight the heavens. Line. Ooh. 
1455. That card's becoming popular in this deck. Been seeing that card more and more. Yeah, so I think it's over. It's over 200 channel points an hour. That you earn something like that, and so yeah, maybe if you click on the chest, it's like 300. Gaze into the light. I think we'll just block here. That frostbite's basically just another three mana ancient yeti. Basically. Daylight warms the heart and lights the way. Need to be able to cast these things faster. Behold the sun's holy light. Patience. Fate has delivered me to you once again. Our destinies are entwined. I cannot turn back! Face your heretic! Wouldn't be surprised that Troll Chant or something, you have Flash Freeze. Alright. No. Good hand for them. I hope they play something before attacking. You know, I hope they give me the opportunity to play one of these things, and now they're not going to do that. These ancient yetis are pretty rough. Time to start just trying to kill one each turn. All right, Choo Choo, thanks for the donation deck there. Glorious light rains down. Let me write this down. Joke debate. That egg, did it move? So I I want to yeah I'm, I'm gonna fall in combat the ancient yeti but I want to give them the opportunity first to see like if they have Trindamir I need to fall in combat the Trindamir. Okay, so not Trindamir. But the enraged yeti I'm not as scared of because we can just block that thing. It doesn't have overwhelm. Really? I could very well just draw them another Enraged Yeti too. I don't know why I'm blocking that instead of the 3-3. <laughs> I guess blocking the 3-3 would make more sense. Yeah, I don't know why I would block that, not the 3-3. Yeah, because then I could have, could have the Serpent challenge the smaller one. The 3-1. Plus, against Avalanche, you'd rather have the 3 3 dead. Again, I'm just scared of Trindamir. So I'm playing this so I can keep up Fallen Comet for Trindamir. I could, yeah, I could pass and be able to have 
supernova, but I can't pass because the, they could just go to attacks and have a lethal attack. Um, gosh, I wish I would have attacked. All right, so still we obliterate. Still obliterate Trindamir. Hey, chill out. So they can't just go to attackers and have lethal. Oh wait, no, they still can because they they have five and four. On the trail. So they play the ice pillar and allow me to supernova. And that was tough. I needed to basically what I I needed to this obliterate the uh, five, like one of the five fives just earlier than what I did. I think that was winnable. If I would have turned five, if I would have uh, play, uh, cast a, the six man obliterate on turn five, I think that was winnable. Okay, but anyway, uh, I like our chances. In this matchup, same kind of matchup. I think I want... I just want to find Obliterates for Anivia. I think that's going to be really important. Need to obliter Obliterate Anivia. Um, I'm going to get rid of all these. Let's look for... Solari Priestess. Probably most important. But we definitely want like the Invoke cards. I got rid of the other Star Shaping. Because the only like 7 plus mana Obliterate is one that needs more... Needs another celestial card in hand. Hmm. I'll get the thing that whenever it dies, you just fully heal it again. I think that could be good in this matchup. Whoa, another donation! Wow! Y'all are awesome, thank you! Okay. So, new boy Nick with a, a bad attempt at mill. Tried to copy your nab cards and somehow try to manage to mill your opponent. So, I understand, like, the point of the deck. Would you... How you said that you're not very good at deck building, would you like me to uh, edit, edit it all and, you know, maybe change some cards up before playing, or do you want me to play it exactly as is? But, you know, I'd, I'd obviously keep it towards that theme of, um, you know, copying your nab cards to mill your opponent. Okay, cool. You got it freely? All right. I will do that. Please, I have connections. I was so here I was really considering passing. But, okay, it's free attack. Ravun. Unyielding light. Uh, absolutely. Done before us. Could Fizz be in a viable deck? Yes. Just a couple of days ago, we played a Fizz deck, and we went we went five zero in Masters rank with a Fizz deck. <clears throat> Obliterate. So the thing about Anivia is, even if I try to obliterate Anivia, they can respond um, by sacrificing Anivia. Stars like jewels on the cloak of night. This will take the chill off. Yeah, we've been doing really well with just Fizz decks, just in general. This is pretty good. Um, not really a Fizz Ionia deck. 
basically the Ionia cards aren't really good enough. I just feel like my hand's gonna be too full for Living Legends. I'm gonna take another one of these. The Destroyer. Yeah, the Destroyer's pretty cool. Let my stars guide all travelers onward. And of course I'm fine with that. I still have double the amount of cards in hand as they do. Like all those things that I were that I was playing were just things that got another card in hand for me. Go get him, the immortal fire. Yeah, this deck has incredible card advantage for sure. Targon definitely does, and so this is a, t a tricky deck to play because you have so many options. It's not it's not an easy deck to play as as we saw like the the last game. I think that if if you make the the decisions that, you know, the correct decisions, you'll have a really good record with this deck because you do have uh just like infinite cards you can you can basically play. Daylight, everlasting. <laughs> like Robin creating Eclipse Dragon which creates another dragon follower and celestial follower. It just it never ends. Warm hearts and hot soup. Sunlight guide you, my brethren. That's ten. Like, <laughs> the amount of cards they have, the amount of cards I have, it's pretty silly. Um, I want to cast the Written in Stars, but that still leaves me with ten cards, so... I'll just... I guess we'll just cast a Diana. And get a Diana in play. Just and just unload two cards. How about another round? Ignorant brawl. Okay. What else can we do? Another immortal fire? Sounds pretty good. <laughs> Play the Pill Cascade over here on this other dragon that hasn't hasn't died yet. Make it more difficult for that thing to die. And then of course that levels up the Diana, so it doesn't die. Okay. That's still us killing them. Oh no, never mind. We take about 20, never mind. We're not killing them. But those spiders die. They're down to three. They got one card. That's gotta be a heck of a card to be able to take care of all this stuff. What is that card? Okay. That's a, that's a good card. Unfortunately, they didn't have any Anivia's dead. That's a good card, though. Alright, down to ten. I would consider this a grindy mid-range deck. Um, well... I guess I could see it as a unit, a unit central control deck. I could see that also. It's definitely like the control side of mid range, but you can have aggressive starts. The destroyer. All right, GGs, two and one.
So this is going to be a championless undying deck. That could be pretty good against us. Let's mulligan Diane. This is going to be this is gone. Um, Diana doesn't really have things too much to challenge in this matchup. We'll mulligan Diana also. Yeah, you could you could definitely splash some different things. You can splash like a little removal spell, like single combat, or uh, you know, splashed um, unspeakable horror. Be another nightfall card for Diana. You can splash some stuff in this kind of deck. Success gets noticed around here. You notice how the higher gun said that success gets noticed around here, talking to the goat. Yeah, obviously they're just going to challenge there. Um, ooh. Calm mind and open heart greet the night. I want to find Equinox, right? Like I want to find like silence things. It does allow the Undying to block, and obviously they can they can also sacrifice it in response to the Equinox. Equinox is slow. I will, we will get rid of one of them. Well, we can now it's just a regular two two. So got this one. It's the four four. Who's on top of the bounty board today? First light illuminates the land. Glorious light rains down. I would have loved to play the gem first, right, and like have this mountain scryer be a three three. I would have loved to have that. But then, you know, we don't get the daybreak, so. Unfortunately, we don't get to do that. Uh, does Chronicler work on Scryer? Mountain Scryer? Um. Yeah, because it's it's allegiance is a summon, so yes, it does. Clad in shining sunlight. So yeah, it works on all the allegiance cards. What do the stars reveal, Mother Moon? This can you know maybe raise them and pressure them. at two out of four still a little ways away you cannot sway me you are misguided it's a good attack I want to play the cosmic inspiration this is a good attack of doing this first But of course, with our deck, need to survive as long as possible with all this invoke stuff. That's all we need to do: is just get survive as long as possible. We got 
Sunburst. Ooh, that that's definitely good. But of course they can have their sacrifice cards. But we have to play this first for the daybreak. We'll just see, hopefully like maybe they don't have maybe they don't have a glimpse beyond. You know, like maybe they maybe no glimpse beyond. Yes! Awesome. Alright, that <clears throat> that one is gone. I got infinite other ones, but at least that one's gone. The heavens are divided, Diana, but sun and moon are ever linked. Answer to me! I will be heard! Could play the shield fair and attack with that also, but I kind of want to keep that as, like, a uh, daybreak card. Number four to level up Leona. So we're doing just fine right now. Maybe I need to play you right now, Shield Bear. They're gonna have four attackers out of two blockers. That's fine. I'm looking at taking four. That's fine. I guess five, right? These are three threes. Ignorant thrall. So these are both just regular pale cascades. They do play, you know, they play cards like Ruination, Citrus Courier, so they can get extra attacks. You could be so much more. You know, to kill all my stuff. Mountain Sojourners. Hmm. Both of their cards are going to have four power. Good use of a of, of a uh, pill cascade. I I did think about that of like I, I could use the gem to keep the Diana from from dying to something like that. But um, I like them spending the five man on on a withering will here. I like. That's good. Wanted to see the Obliterate card, of course. So Destroyer will be an 11-9. Does kill them pretty quickly. Well, that's their first card, so it's not even a Nightfall card. That's, so they just use Withering Will and now Unspeakable Horror, two things that destroy a spell shield. <clears throat> so that's nice. I was going to challenge the Mountain Sojourners this turn. Not anymore. Let's put some pressure on him. I too serve. Careful. I don't really need that one. Shakedown's a great card. Well, that's alright, they can kill those as long as they don't kill me. Because 
we're going to be just fine playing a long game. So just don't kill me. This way. Not sure why you wouldn't play that before making the attack. Fire is good, but I guess we'll just take another traveler. I am the traveler. So mortal fire will be twelve power now. Yeah, they didn't do any damage to me. I guess maybe they thought they dealt damage to me. Okay. Yep. <laughs> the game's over. Alright, GG's. Three and one. Man, Invoke is powerful. <clears throat> Yesterday we played the Gauntlet. We did the, the best two out of three Gauntlet. We got the Prime Glory with that. That was pretty sweet. And then played a couple other rank up uh, decks. We played Taric Draven, which is my favorite rank up deck, and, Por and Give It All Poros. Those are like my two favorite rank up decks these days. The gauntlet decks are over on the YouTube channel now, if you want to watch uh, us play the best of three gauntlet. So, Swain, Vladimir, Sunburst seems great against both Swain and Vladimir. I'm going to just keep this hand. I don't have anything to do on turn three, but I like the Mountain Goat on two. Now we have a three, so here we go. Got a good curve. We didn't have anything to do on turn three yet, but that's what draw steps are for. Our draw steps help fill out that curve. That'll do. <laughs> Welcome to the tipsy All right, let's turn three now. Four. Um, I don't know. These are great. Daylight warms the heart and lights the way. All right, let's go ahead and try the Mountain Scryer. Yes, Allegiance hit. Got lucky. We'll take a Doggy. Take a Cosmo. Ancient things trapped in the ice. Nothing a little steel. Go get him, Goat. I guess the problem with attacking with Goat here is it does put another gem in hand, which I don't really have room for more gems. Yeah, I know. That, that was a pretty lucky allegiance. Uh, I guess I'm going to just play a gem on this. I just want to get a card out of my hand. I'll turn. I'm not actually going planning on blocking, but I'm just going to turn this Mountain Scryer into being a 3-3. Born a patrician, I became a soldier. You became a soldier. <laughs> That's like one of my favorite lines. I don't know why. Just how, how Swain, like... Says that all sing songy. I became a soldier. One of my favorite lines of the game. Born of, born of attrition. Messenger believes it chases the trickster. Get a messenger. Chase the trickster. Ooh, can we hit it again? Wow, we hit again. Two for two. Targon's history is in each stone and star. Man, pretty unbelievable. Two for two. I'd never keep my guests waiting. Just go infinite. Now they see who I truly am. It's possible I should just do like some attacking. Just clear up the board a little bit for me. My spirit shines. 
Nah, shouldn't attack. Yeah, just get a little damage on them. I'm gonna need the spaces next turn anyway. I would like the, the seven mana card. That'd be like my favorite. Yeah, that's true. I I didn't protect against open attack, but to be fair, actually, I mean, I'm I'd rather they like that's just not really attack I was scared of. I'd rather they do that kind of open attack than um than I don't know play like overwhelm things or something something else that was like really scary. I just don't really care about that attack. Sure. After the battle of the ring. Each journey is a discovery. Let's go with the destroyer. For the Empire. The few for the many. Oh no, I have ten cards. I am Lord and Master. I have to burn the top card. Yeah, turn eight scary. I'm gonna try to go warrior to challenge the Swain. Oh, I would like that pale cascade. And then I can either play eleven seven destroyer. I guess that's just what I'm doing. Never mind. I can't sunburst anymore. I was gonna say or sunburst after combat, but I can't do that. Order, sir. Bring forth our army. Yes, yeah, true. We could have Diana challenge. Let's see. Okay, what if we do that? What if we have Diana? I can kill both their champions. Swain or uh, Vladimir alive than the Swain. Bless the people and fear the heretics. The Swain's charge. just leveled up. So now Sunburst doesn't kill Swain. Victory awaits. Fear the power. So that's actually a little bit of a problem. Yeah, that's actually a problem. If I do this, I have five mana left. That's a good one. Come, a new phase awaits. Yes, this is what I see. For the Empire. The few for the many. That stuns. I thought I thought about passing. I probably should have just passed. That stuns there. Hey, what's up, Narinen? Thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. I appreciate that. Our third sub of the day. Narinen keeping that sub going. 17 amazing months. Uh I don't have any specific deck to recommend climbing with. I think you can kind of climb with with really anything that that you want, that's that's a uh, great part about this game is that everything is uh, you can everything's like able to be like you can, you can climb with with uh, really with anything with with, with whatever um, you enjoy playing. So this will put me down to nine.
Yeah, this is, it's not, this game's pretty difficult to level up. Or sorry, sorry, to, uh, sorry, this game's pretty tough to rank up. It is, it's not, it's not an easy game to rank up. And so like you're, you're, it's okay to kind of be in, we, we went through like this whole discussion earlier, earlier actually. Um, but it's, it's okay to kind of be in one ranking, you know, like if you're in, like you said, you're in, uh, platinum right now. Um, that's okay. Like it's, it, it could take a while, but it's, it, you know, you just don't get discouraged. It's okay to lose. Um, you know, just keep learning and uh, keep working at it. It is, this is not a game where you can expect to rank up real fast, honestly. It, with like the win, you move up one, lose, you move down one. It takes a lot of wins more than loss. You know, a lot of more wins than losses to rank up. So it's, it is not easy. Clad in shining sunlight. The gauntlet changes each week. Each week they put up a different gauntlet. That hurts a ton. New Leviathan. That was basically the only card I was scared of was New Leviathan. If they can stun something, I lose. So basically, like if they have anything that does nexus damage, I lose. I'm absolutely parched. Let it flow. So this is the best case scenario. I'm at two. Star shaping is the card that I really want to draw, of course, because our nexus is at such a low life total. Really want to draw star shaping. That's fine, I can deal with that. A greedy attack. Many tries. Overwhelm. I don't like overwhelm. Give something else overwhelm too. I really wanted to obliterate card for the other thing they would get overwhelm. Um, I'm gonna take this ridden stars to maybe be able to draw a Leona that can stun. Ah. GG's. Alright, so we ended up three and two. I don't know if I could have protected against the double Leviathan better. I, I probably could have. So this deck, with everything have with with there being so much card advantage in this deck, you're going to have just a ton of decisions and of course all the invoke decisions you know you have like one of each each thing so not only like the regular decisions on like how are you spending your mana each turn but then also the decisions on what are you choosing with your invoke because um, a lot of times whenever you're invoking on like turn three you're going to need a card for like turn eight and so just planning ahead like that and everything is is not easy and so there's going to be uh some games like both of those losses i think that if you know, we'd go back and play them over, and I know exactly how, like, their turns are going to play out. I, I could have definitely chosen cards and played in such a way that we could have won that game. Definitely. But, you know, it's it's not easy to uh, to know exactly how that's going to play out. And that's why, like, this kind of deck would definitely be a deck 
that reward that would reward you for playing it a ton because then the next time you play against like a a swain vladimir you're like all right well I, i've played this matchup i kind of know what it's going to play like and then and that just uh kind of compounds like the more you play a deck with tons of decisions like this the more you learn how the games are going to play out when you're playing very long games how they're going to play out with each um, matchup and so then the better decisions you're going to be making early on and just throughout the games so definitely felt like a pretty pretty powerful uh deck um but uh but yeah that's that's kind of like one uh so that'd be like one tip about piloting this is that um just just understand like that the, like okay so just kind of reiterate that. So like I, I lost those two that I, I think I could have won if I would have made different decisions, but just understand that, that that's okay and um, learn from it and then and uh, kind of take that going forward with your next game. So when you're when you're pilot, piloting this deck, really be not only uh, you know not only try to pilot at your best, but also kind of think about like what decisions you know with all your decisions think about like okay what am i what like with all these invoke cards think okay this is what i'm going to choose i'm going to choose like this one on the left but what would happen if i would have chosen the one on the middle or the right and kind of try to remember that while you're playing and kind of keep like mental tally of that and um and you can kind of see how the games play out what did your opponent use to beat you what do you, you know like what kind of cards didn't do well enough on your side and kind of move forward with that knowledge of like the next time, okay, maybe I don't want the card on the left. Maybe I actually wanted this card over here on the right. And uh, maybe this one would have been better. And um, and that, so like, don't don't always do the exact same thing necessarily, unless you know that that's working, but you know, kind of try to try to switch up like your invoke sometimes to take some different cards and try things out and uh, you know, focus on, on learning and improving with your future games with a deck like this. That's something that's that's very uh, important. The biggest benefit to playing the mono region is your allegiance cards, because you'll you'll get even more lucky and hit all the time whenever you have all forty of the exact same with the allegiance card. Um, so that's the biggest thing. And and the person that donated for this deck wanted to play an all Targon deck. Didn't want to play two regions. I yeah I like the Mountain Diana more than this yes. I, I am not. Yes, I like the Mountain Diana deck. I, the Mountain Diana deck, which is very very similar, um, forgoes playing Leona and Robin because basically, like Leona and Robin, you usually just find invoke cards to be playing the t turns you're playing, like Leona and Robin anyway. But then it just has like Aurelian Soul at the top end that sometimes you just slam Aurelian Soul and it it just wins. You know, it'll level up and win you the game has a couple of those, but it's not really focused on Aurelian Soul. I had a little bit more early stuff. I had like the Spacey Sketchers that, you know, sometimes you just discard Aurelian Soul and so you can get some a little bit faster invoke. The This Mountain Diana is going to be very good against uh, aggro with having 9-1 drops and Unspeakable Horror. You're, this is going to be better against aggro with all of that stuff. Um... <clears throat> we I did you know we did see with the Leona deck that we were just playing where's it at there it is day and night that the having the ability to stun the strongest enemy is really nice defensively but only if they give you the opportunity to do that notice that the our opponents didn't want to like they would never like whenever we had our Leona in play they would never they would always open attack every single turn they would never let us play anything first so we're not really getting that that great of a bonus from this because we don't really need it offensively we're not in an aggressive deck so really where the stun comes into play is defensively but if they always open attack because you're playing Leona then what you know then then that that benefit is minimalized yeah, the Mountain Diana one should maybe have the the goat. Uh, that that list is a little. It's a it's a couple of weeks old. I haven't I haven't touched that list for a couple of weeks, so they should maybe have the Mountain Goat in it now. All right, but there we go. That's that's some um, uh, day and night. All right, those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there, and of course, feel free to leave those comments as well. I'd appreciate that. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.